Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for logging to this month's webinar session brought to you by the Belize Hotel Association in collaboration with Belizing.com. For those who are new to our webinars, welcome. Of course, this is, a, this is a special session because our monthly webinars are usually exclusive to only BHA members, so having other tourism stakeholders with us is great. My name is Angela from Belizing.com, and I'll be your host along with Adisha from the Belize Hotel Association. The topic for this session is how to use remarketing to increase your website bookings presented by Mr. Abner Mendoza from Belizing.com. If you have any questions throughout this webinar, please feel free to use the chat box at the right corner of your screen. Your questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. Now, before we get into the presentation, I'd like to pass it on to Alicia for, any proper, for a proper introduction of herself and the wonderful association she is a part of. Thank you, Angela, for that introduction. Um, thank you, everyone, for registering for this afternoon's webinar. Just to share with you a little bit about BHA, the Belize Hotel Association is a non is a non governmental, non profit organization and Belize's oldest private tourism organization. We present over a hundred members, and our members are comprised of allied members, hotel members, tour operators, slash destination management company. Our mission is to promote sustainable tourism in Belize, and our focus is to promote and market our members locally and internationally. So if you'd like to know more information and the list of benefits of becoming a member with BHA, I urge you to click the offer that is showing now on your screen, visit our website at belizehotels.org, or give us a call at 223-0669. Now I'd like to welcome once again our presenter for this afternoon, Mr. Abner Mendoza. Hello, Mr. Abner. Um, I can't hear your mic. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I had it on mute. Um, so thank you for that introduction, Alicia and Angela, and welcome everyone. I see we have about 40 people already signed in. Uh, so that's really great. That's a really great turnout. So thanks for uh, giving us your time today. I know your time is very valuable to you. Um, so I'm going to give you a really, uh, I'm going to try to be brief with my presentation, but hopefully it's something that you will find useful. Um, the topic today, as you know, is how to increase your website bookings with remarketing. Um, but before I get started, I'll tell you a little bit about Belizing.com. Uh, you may or may not have heard of us. We are the largest marketplace for Belize tours and shuttle and shuttles. Uh, we are a locally owned and operated booking platform in Belize. Uh, we are based in San Ignacio, and a lot of what we do is digital marketing. So this webinar series, so once a month, we do this in collaboration with the hotel association. As Angela said, it's usually exclusive to BHA members, and certainly I encourage you to join. Um, but so this is just. Uh, us kind of giving back to the to the to the community, giving back to the stakeholders, uh, some knowledge that 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 we have um, come across in our uh, journey uh, with Belizing.com, and we also invite other speakers. So every every month we have another uh, different speaker talking about different topics with uh, concerning digital marketing. Uh, Belizing.com through our uh, different channels, including our website and social media platforms. Uh, we reach about 100,000 uh, travelers to Belize per month, and we have partnerships with over 125 local uh, tour and shuttle operators. So uh, that's just about Belizing.com. But let's let's get into what we we're here to talk about, what you're here to to learn today, um, and we'll start with this, right? The fact is, and this is a well-known statistic, that 95% of people who visit your website will not book your service, right? And that's that's kind of depressing. Um, but the, the good news is that there's something we can do about it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What can we do about the fact that 95% or more of people won't book the first time, right? At least the first time. Uh, when we talk about digital marketing, we typically talk about the traveler's journey, right? And this is often represented in, in traditional marketing as the marketing funnel, right? And it's just a way to kind of visualize how a potential customer engages with different resources, uh, with your website, and what is what is the journey? What is the series of decisions that they might make? Uh, what type of information might they come across as they start thinking about coming to Belize? As they start thinking about where to stay in Belize, what to do in Belize? 
So going through that journey until they finally make a decision, where am I going to stay? I'm going to book with this hotel as opposed to this other hotel. And there are different factors that come into play, right? Um, and even after the fact, after they leave, um, you know, do they, do they go back and tell uh, their friends and family about the wonderful experience they had at your property? And then you get other people coming back, right? So in the context of digital marketing, we want to be present in all these different digital touch points. So this uh, diagram is representing uh, a few examples of some digital touch points that your potential customers might come across. One of them being your website, others being uh, different OTAs, TripAdvisor, Expedia, uh, Belizean.com. You might be writing blogs, uh, producing videos, uh, whatever the case may be, right? Sending out newsletters. Travelers will go through this journey with or without you. So it is always in our best interest to be in as much of these uh, touch points as possible so that we are capturing, uh, uh, we're getting new customers online. A recent study by Google actually showed that the, the, an average accommodation purchase journey spans about 36 days and involves about 45 digital touch points. Um, I think the last time uh, we had a presentation from the, the Expedia rep uh, representative in Belize, I think he had talked about um, the average booking window in Belize is about 40, about 54 days, I believe, right? So there is, the point is there's, there's, a, there's a short span or a short window within which people are either researching, making a decision and actually booking, right? And so we wanna, we wanna be able to, 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 to catch people at the right time with the right message uh, so that they eventually book with us, right? In the context of when we talk, what we're talking about today is remarketing or often called retargeting, that's looking at that 95% of people who leave your website and don't book. You want to keep reminding them about you, reminding them about your property, and you want to try to bring them back and hopefully get them to book, right? That's kind of what remarketing is. And I think most of us are familiar with it in practice, at least. The process of reaching out to your previous visitors through some third party platform other than your website, right? Um, and this technically is accomplished using what's called a pixel. And a pixel is just a piece of code that you put on your website and it records every time someone visits your website, right? So it's usually provided by a platform that you are then going to use to advertise on. The big players are Google and Facebook, right? So Google will give you a piece of code, you put it on your website. Most of you guys are probably already using Google Analytics, right? And in fact, the same Google Analytics Analytics code will work for what we we're gonna talk about today. Um, the other part of this now, so you're, you're, you have this pixel, this piece of code you put on your website, it records the visitor, and then um, you want to do something with that, right? You want to act on that data that you're accumulating. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about in, uh, today as well. Typically, retargeting or remarketing ads have a higher rate of conversion because the idea is that those people already have some familiarity with your website. They already took some time to come to your website to, to kind of see what you're offering. Um, and depending on how you target them, you know, those might be people who are ready to book. And if you target them at the right time, then you're probably going to get the, the booking. And that's the goal here. Retargeting can also be considered in a way as digital stalking. And, um, you know, that, that word might have a, a negative connotation to it in a sense, um, but it's kind of like, you know, when you're searching for something online, um, you go on Google, you search, you want to buy some shoes, and all of a sudden you start seeing ads for shoes everywhere, right? That's, that's remarketing in practice. And that's kind of what we want to do. Of course, you can do remarketing in such a way that, that people are probably going to get annoyed. Um, so there's some frequency caps you, you, you have to think about. Um, and you don't really want to get people angry that they're seeing your ads way too much. And, and I will admit that Belizean.com, at least in Belize, doing some awareness ads, we have done a lot of, we have done some high frequency ads. Uh, so, so some of you here may have seen our ads more, at least more than once, right? That in a sense is, is, was a little bit intentional, but that was just building awareness. And when we're doing, um, remarketing to potential travelers, it's a little different, we, right? We kind of suppress the frequency. We don't want to annoy people. The goal in remarketing is always to target the right audience at the right time 
with the right message, right? So the key is how do we target the right audience? What is the right time and what is the right message to send them? The answer is that all that information is in the data that you're collecting on your site. Your Google Analytics already has that data. If you don't have Google Analytics or you don't have any of these pixel collecting, pixels collecting data on your website, certainly that's kind of your first step, right? So you start collecting data and then you can start understanding who is visiting your website, where are they coming from? And then you kind of, then what you're able to do, and I'll show you this in practice uh, in just a minute here, having all this data of all these people visiting your website, you can then uh, build these audience segments. So you can put them into different segments based on certain behavior in your website, based on where they're located, based on how often they visit your website, right? So you build these audience segments and those audience segments, because you have incorporated some type of intelligence into building those, those, those segments, then you can show ads to those people, right? And then you can run ads on Facebook, you can run ads on, on Google and on YouTube, and those are people who are familiar with you. And because of that, those are people who have a higher probability of, uh, number one, uh, recognizing your brand. And number two, they might be, depending on how you're targeting them, they might be at that point of being ready to book. And if you show them a special offer, um, you know, that, that marketing tactic of the fear of missing out, right? When you're, when you're telling people, oh, only one room is left at this price that fear of missing out approach um, will get to them and then they'll book with you, right? This is one of the, one of the uh, tactics you can use. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. So what I'm, I'm gonna kind of show you what I'm talking about, right? So we talked about, it starts with the audience, right? It starts with collecting data and then understanding your audience. Um, so let me, let me switch on my screen sharing here. Just bear with me one second. And you should be seeing my screen. All right. So this is my Google Analytics, um, curbalizing.com. Um, and if I go into the admin, and hopefully I think most of you will have Google, at least Google Analytics uh, installed on your website. So if you go here in your property, um, and the audience definitions for your property, you can create different audiences. So like I said, you're collecting all this data. You kind of want to apply, incorporate some type of intelligence into it. Segment people that are visiting your website into these different buckets, if you will, right? Um, and I, was, I, I won't walk through the process because it might take too long um, to kind of show you how to define these audiences. But I look at one that I defined just last week when, I was, when we were testing out this webinar presentation. Um, so this is an audience based on our website. And so as an example, we're saying, okay, we wanna target people who are looking at the ATM tour, right? And we have several providers on our website who offer the ATM tour, whether from uh, San Pedro, San Ignacio, uh, and Hopkins, I think we have some people offering it from, from Placencia. But we're doing a general, we're defining a general audience here of people who might be interested in an ATM tour and who might not have booked it yet, right? So the way we do that is when, when you go and create your audience, you can define your audience, right? And typically it starts, you, you define a 30 day window, right? So we're saying anyone who within the last 30 days fit certain criteria, put them into this group, right? And then after 30 days, you know, it's a sliding window. So, um, you know, every day who was visited within the past 30 days. Uh, Google, Analy Google Analytics, sorry, uh, gives you different options how you can define your audience. You can get really granular, you can get really specific about who you want to target. Um, in this example here, I've, I've put a couple examples, a uh, couple of criteria here, just as an example, right? So we're saying we want to target people who have um, visited our website more than once, right? So we don't want to target people who just came to our website, maybe by mistake, uh, they're not interested, they visited one time and they never came back in the last 30 days, right? So now, I mean, and typically we, you know, you want to put this number a little bit higher. Um, so, so that's looking at the frequency or the frequency of visits. So have they shown enough interest in my website 
that maybe I should spend some money to show them an ad to entice them to come back and book, right? And you can set other criteria. So you can look at, uh, so you have all these different filters you can incorporate into your audience uh, definition. Uh, so in this case, I'm saying people who visited a page that had the word ATM, right, uh, on the page title or the URL, uh, or had the, the um, Tony Chill um, keyword there on the URL. And I'm filtering it also by people who, um, in addition to, the, to, to that criteria, they also visited a book now page. So that signals to me, knowing my webs our website, that okay, they looked at some content related to ATM, and at some point, they at least clicked on the book now button, but they maybe they didn't uh, complete the booking, right? So in here, in your case, you might have another filter that says um, that they, or, or yeah, this one actually says they did not click on the book now. Right, so you can you can kind of basically what you're doing is you're trying to understand how people browse your website, understand who are the people you want to target. So, for example, you might you might want to target people who visited your book now page, but never visited the thank you page, right? So maybe after your booking form, you you redirect people to a page that says thank you, um, and so you can put that as a filter in here. So if they visited book now, they did visit the thank you page. Very likely, those are people who are, who are interested enough at least to click the book now uh, button, but for one reason or the other, they didn't. Uh, they didn't book. Maybe because you know the price wasn't right yet. Whatever the factor is, um, but at least that gives you an opportunity then to identify and target those people specifically, right? I mean, there there are tons of different options available here when building your audience. You can segment people by different demographics, age ranges. Um, by gender, language, uh, in-market segments. So you can say, you know, for example, in Belizean.com, we get a lot of, most people we get are in that travel in-market segment. Uh, the in-market segment is uh, Google using machine learning to understand based on people's browsing behavior, uh, are they in the market for travel, right? And if you look at your Google Analytics report um, and their in-market segment reports, you'll, you, you will probably find that a lot of your audience is at, at least in that travel market. Right? Um, this is also a way that when you're running ads, you are targeting the right people. Right? You're not wasting money on people who will never book with you. You're not wasting money on your competitors who are just looking at your website to see what kind of specials you have going on and so on and so forth. Right? Um, so that's kind of a brief overview. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. Um, and Google Analytics is a really powerful tool, tool that you can use to really understand your audience um, and how people are browsing on your website and then be able to target them specifically. Uh, so that's, a, that's an example on Google. Um, Google Analytics, there's a way you can hook up if you're running Google Ads uh, in your Google Ads account, uh, you can uh, link it to your Google Analytics account so that when you create an audience in Google Analytics, you can link that audience to your Google Ads and you can use it when you, when you create an ad. So this is an example of an ATM audience that we have here. And you can see some, um, some insights into the audience, um, you know, what the audience size is and how many people you're targeting based on the different criteria you have. So this is our 30 day, um, I created this just last week. So, so really when you create this, it does take some time. Uh, it re requires time, so you, you install the pixel, you start, collecting data on your website, it's just going to take some time because it's not going to look back at your previous uh, website visitors. This is from the point where you install or from the point where you uh, create these audience segments, that's when it's going to start putting people in this group, right? So you kind of, it, 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 like I said, it, requ it requires some time and maybe after a week, depending on how much traffic you get on your website, maybe after a week, maybe after a month, then you can start acting on these uh, different audience groups that you've created. Um, and so when you're creating an ad, for example, this is an example of an ad that, a video ad that we have running on Fabulizium.com uh, on YouTube. Um, so then you can use those audiences. So there are different options and how you want to target people, right? Um, but you can define your audiences in, within your ads and you can target people specific, specific, specifically sorry, based on um, how they interacted with your website. So for example, as a exa quick example, we have these different uh, audiences that we've created uh, for our Google Ads. 
and then we can target, uh, then we add those uh, as targeted audience in, in our um, in our ads. Um, or, you know, an, an approach that a lot of people take uh, when just starting is that is, um, they might uh, use the, the audience as observation only, which means that you're just kind of looking to see how different audiences are performing. Typically with remarketing, uh, as it pertains to Google Ads, we always recommend that people only use remarketing, um, or especially if you're doing display ads, right? Display ads, we there's, we only use it as remarketing ads because you can you can really waste a lot of money uh, on display ads really quickly. Um, but that's a that's a story for another day. Um, so that was Google. Now I'm going to quickly show you the same thing in Facebook, right? Uh, oh, one thing I want to point out is so you have all these different platforms. I'm only talking about Google and Facebook today. You have LinkedIn. You have you know all these other social media um, platforms. Um, and other advertising um, platforms that will provide the same and kind of work the same way, right? Where they provide you a pixel, which is a is a piece of code you put in your website. So there is this thing, if you're not familiar with it, that's really great, the Google Tag Manager. Um, so the Google Tag Manager is something where you can, that you can use to kind of manage all these different pixels. And so if you're running ads on, so if you're collecting data in Google Analytics, uh, Google AdWords, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, uh, you know, all these different platforms uh, will provide you with this, this piece of code. Um, you can use the Google Tag Manager as a central place to, to manage all these tags. So instead of putting the code from each website onto your website, uh, you just put one Google Tag Manager code, and then this is where you manage all the different code. I know it, it, it gets a little complicated, and I won't bore you with the details of that. Um, but just if you, if you haven't heard of the Google Tag Manager, um, I really recommend you looking into it, especially if you're using multiple platforms, um, or even just two, Facebook and Google. This is the example of the pixel in, in, um, in Facebook. So this is the Facebook Business Manager. Um, so if you don't have the Facebook Business Manager, if you're, if you're running Google Ads, cert, I mean Facebook Ads, certainly you, you very likely have used the Facebook Business Manager. Um, and so you go in, uh, in your menu here under Asset, under uh, Measure and Report, uh, there's a pixel option. And that pixel option will allow you to create your pixel if you don't have one. And then uh, it will give you the code again, um, like I said before. Um, and then if I go into Audiences, right? so similar idea like we saw in Google Analytics, you're collecting all this data, but what you want to do is you want to start putting people into groups, right? Start putting the, the people who visit your website into groups based on how they're interacting or engaging with your website. And so this is an example here of, uh, again, the same similar AT, or no, this one is the sharks, okay. So this is an example of a audience that we create to target people who might be interested in shark reality tours, right? We, we, we do get a lot of bookings for shark reality tours on our website. Um, so we've created an audience for people who are, uh, at least in the past 30 days, visited some content on our website related to has the keyword shark or you know we have these different keywords that we define um and then as we create our ad so i create this group and then i can go in and create an ad for example right and i won't walk through the entire process because it might take a little too long um but basically like i said you create that group um you you create some broad uh, criteria for that group in our case in this example uh, trying to target people who are interested in shark reality tours, right? Um, and then Google kind of walks you through uh, using this wizard um, with all the different options you have for creating your ad. So this is the, and you'll see here, I started from that uh, audience definition, so it automatically put, put it in there for me. Um, one nice thing that Google, um, sorry, I get confused. One nice thing that Facebook now has is this ability to, target potential travelers. Again, this is the same idea I had mentioned uh, when in the in-market segments with Google. Um, this is Facebook using machine learning, using all the signals and, and all the information they have about everyone browsing, right? And trying to identify whether these people are potential travelers. So looking at what types of websites they're browsing, um, they can, to a, to a fairly accurate 
uh, degree of certainty tell if people are in the market to travel or potential travelers. So for us, because we're in the travel industry, right, we always have this check. We always want to reach potential travelers. And again, what this does, it's kind of filters out your ads um, to people who are not travel, who, who are never going to book, right? Um, and this is just when you're when you're creating these types of conversion ads. There are, of course, ad different types of ads that you want to create depending on how you are targeting people on that traveler journey. Um, and so that is that is a really basic, quick uh, overview um, of audience segments in Google and in Facebook. Um, certainly, like I said, there is a lot more to it than than what I've shown you here, but at least. Uh, hopefully, I've, I've shown you the um, how you kind of get how you can get started at least um, today. Um, and like I said, the first thing you can do is just start by collecting data, installing those pixels on your site. It does take a couple a couple days, a couple weeks to to actually get some uh, a fairly decent audience size that you can then use and start running ads. Right. So the goal here uh, is to target the right people at the right time with the right message, right? So, so always keep that in mind. We, I like to advocate for a systematic approach to doing this, right? So uh, retargeting can be a very effective form of marketing. It does have a higher ROI than your typical ads. And that's, again, because people already have familiarity and because you're targeting them very specifically, right? So. It, it starts with identifying how people are engaging with your site, identifying their behavior. So if you recall when I was showing the example on Google Analytics, I put in some criteria based on how many times they visited my site and what type of pages they visited, right? So you identify their behavior. Maybe they visited this one page, but not this other page, right? So I know maybe that they didn't book something. Then you can also, then you filter it by recency. How recent did they, they visit? So I might target people who um, were at the book now button maybe two weeks ago. So I might say, okay, I'll, I'll have a different message for those people. Maybe I'll give a bigger discount because I'm at the point where I might start losing that audience, right? So you also definitely have to consider recency. How recent did they, um, visit your website? And of course, you know, in defining the audience, you define how long you want to keep people in that audience. So you might want to have a very small window or you might want to have a very large window, just depending on how you, how you are defining the audience. We have some audiences that are up to 90 days, right? So it just depends on, on what the goals are of your marketing campaigns that you, that you're thinking about. And then I didn't show this in, uh, in, in the Facebook example just now, but you can then also target people by geographic location. Right. So you might say, like, for example, a lot of the ads we run, we only target it, target it to the United States and Canada and some other countries that we know um, based on our Google Analytics. That's where we're getting the most traffic, the most conversions from. And then lastly, you know, you filter this down uh, very specifically and then you can also. Um, you can define your audience based on the different channels you want to target. And when I say channels, I mean uh, what platform are you going to show this message on? Whether it be Facebook, whether you are trying, you're doing an email campaign, for example. You know, remarketing doesn't always have to happen on your website or, or by your website visitors. I mean, remarketing in action was a lot of you, I'm sure, received the emails from us about this webinar multiple times. But if you received it a second time, it's maybe because you didn't click it on the first time, right? Or maybe you clicked it the first time, but you didn't register. And so we, even in our email marketing, we, we apply some of these concepts uh, where we kind of filter people and we're gonna send them a second or a third email based on their actions from pre previous emails, right? So you have these different channels, the three big channels that, that, that you all should be focusing on is your website, of course, social media um, and an email. Email is a very, very effective and has a high ROI, very effective channel, at least for us. And we do a lot of upselling on, on email as well. So for example, if people book a shuttle, they'll start getting emails from us about tours that they can do based on where we know they're going in that shuttle, right? So we apply a lot of these things um, to kind of get people to revisit, um, to come back to our website and book maybe the first time or book again or book something different, right? You can apply the same things on your website. Um, it doesn't, it really doesn't take a lot of, uh, a lot of marketing budget. 
we run a lot of Facebook ads for a dollar a day um, because really Facebook, no one comes on Facebook with their credit card ready to book, right? So really when you're running Facebook ad, you wanna, ads, you wanna minimize your spend because you kind of think about the context of the channel as well, right? People are not necessarily on Facebook ready to buy, but they are on Google ready to buy, right? So, so, so we kind of spend more money in Google than on Facebook, but you certainly can't ignore any of these channels. So in summary, how can you start today? The number one thing you can do after this today, and I'm almost done, I promise, uh, link your website with Google Analytics and with Facebook. If you don't know how to do that, uh, feel free to send us an email, we'll be happy to help you. Um, but link your website, start collecting data, start understanding, thinking about how people are interacting with your website. Of course, this is assuming that you know, you're know you doing other things to bring people to your website. You're promoting your website, whatever the case may be, to bring audience, bring an audience to your website. And then you want to do something with that audience. You don't want to leave money on the table. I mean, if you're not doing remarketing, you're really ignoring, like I said, at least 95% of people visiting your website. Um, so you want to do something about that. And then you want to take it a step further and set up those audience segments like we talk about. Understand how people are interacting, put them into different groups, and at some point you might uh, want to put some budget into uh, into running ads. And like I said, it can be it can be fairly inexpensive. A dollar a day on Facebook is uh, what we do for a lot of ads. Um, so in summary, retargeting is highly effective. And that is the way you can, that is one way at least that you can increase the revenue, uh, book, increase bookings in your website. Just bring them back, remind them about your wonderful services, remind them that you're better than the competition, right? Um, and then get them to book, Understand, you know, especially those that seem to have signaled based on their behavior that they're ready to book. Uh, like I said, it's a minimal ad spend and it's a, it's a much higher ROI than typical ads. And if nothing else, it ensures that your brand stays uh, in front of people, right? Like I mentioned in the beginning, it kind of gets, I mean, depending on frequency, um, you can start playing with people's emotion if you're showing too much ads to them or the same ad over and over and over again. So um, that, that's, another, that's another issue, but, but certainly it can be an effective approach um, and um, very easy to implement. So I guess you, you're leaving money on the table if you're not, if you're not doing remarketing. And it's a little more complicated than maybe what I alluded to uh, or showed today, but not much more, right? And certainly the people with the right skills and know-how can get this done for you and you can start seeing some more bookings through your website. Um, so with that, I conclude. I, again, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, we try to keep these webinars really short. Uh, so that people can digest it and not take up too much time with their, in their day and not get too bored, right, um, with speakers rambling on. So certainly if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put it in the chat box. I'll be happy to answer it. Um, if you want to connect with the Belize Hotel Association, we at uh, Belizean.com are a proud member of the Belize Hotel Association. They do a lot, uh, especially in marketing to, to an audience um, uh, in the United States and all over the world, right? So they travel all over the world and they market uh, their members to people who are uh, ready to come to Belize. And so contact Penny, um, that's her email, membership at Belize.org. We also um, manage a blog website for the BHA. So as members of BHA, you get the ability to, just to help in your content marketing, um, there's, a blog, there's a blog website where members can publish blogs. Um, and if you want to connect to us at Belizean.com, that's our email, our website, and, and um, connect with us on, on Facebook and YouTube. With that, um, if there are any questions, Angela, um, I, I haven't looked at the, the question log, but I'd be happy to answer them if, you have, if you've taken note of it. Okay. Again, Thank what? you, Mr. Abner, for that. Um, there aren't any questions so far. You can go ahead. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry about that. One last thing, certainly, you know, um, if you have questions, send me an email. That's our email. Um, but the recording, if you if you came late, I see one person came in a little bit late. This recording will be sent to you. To a, a link will be sent to you at least two hours after this, after we we close the the webinar session. Um, and if you're interested in this webinar and other marketing benefits, definitely consider becoming a member of BHA. Um, it's a wonderful organization. You don't have to be a hotel. We're not a hotel, we're a member of BHA. 
um, I'll tell you, it's uh, you get a good return for your investment. Um, Thank you, Amner. All right. Thank you for that presentation, Mr. Abner. I hope that everyone watching has learned a little bit more about how to employ this remarketing strategy to increase your bookings. Um, if you have any questions, again, feel free to send it in the chat box. But meanwhile, we wait. I'd like to note, make a note for our members that our next webinar session is in October with Kristen Simmons discussing, discussing how to make how to play with your audience using easy SEO tools to help you build that content that's geared towards what your guests are searching for. So if you're not a member and would like to join that session, please reach out to Penny from the BHA to become a member and get access to that session. Also, if you are a member and have blogs that you'd like to get published on the BHA's website, like Mr. Abner said, um, you can click the offer that I'm publishing here to submit your blogs and we'll have them reviewed and published on the blog site. That's right. And then next month's team is birding. So we look forward to be receiving your birding articles and your birding blogs. Okay. So um, I don't see any questions posted. So I guess it's all clear. Everyone understands what remarketing is, how it works, why it's important. It seems so. We have no questions so far. Okay, I guess Mr. Abner did a great job explaining <laughs> and with that demo. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's good news. All right. um, but certainly, um, yeah. if anyone has any questions, our email address is there, and, and I'll be happy to answer. And um, I think people are asking also right. about the slide, and I think you will get a copy of the slide. Okay, we have a question from <laughs> Tiffany asking, is there a budget you would advise to allocate for remarketing? Um, so it, it, it really depends. I mean, when you start, when you're starting and if you're doing it right, um, a lot of time you will allocate, I would say about up to 30% of your ad budget to remarketing, right? But then you also have to monitor it because you have to, you have to make sure you're getting the return on that investment. And if you're seeing you're getting a bigger return on remarketing, then you increase your budget on remarketing, right? So we, we typically, uh, for our budget, we have about 30 to 40% uh, of marketing. Um, and, but we keep monitoring it and we keep adjusting it, right? So there's not a hard and set um, percentage. It really depends on the performance, right? But to start out, I would say start small um, because you want to monitor the performance. You want to make sure you're getting the return. You want to make sure uh, you're spending um, you're getting more conversion uh, relatively based uh, as opposed to what you're spending elsewhere um, on other marketing um, ads. Okay, I hope that answers your question, Tiffany. We have another from Ivan and Louis asking what date is the webinar in October? That is scheduled for October 25th. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Okay, um, if you have any other questions after this webinar ends, feel free to send an email to either Ms. Penny or Ms. Alicia or um, to support at Belizing.com if it's related to this presentation. Um, with that said, we'd like to end it here. Thank you all for logging in. We really appreciate your time in joining us. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add, Alicia? No, I just want to thank Abner for taking his time again to do this webinar for us. It was very, very informative. I believe we all learned a lot today. And I look forward to seeing everyone again, hopefully for next month's webinar. Okay, all right. Well, thank you. And we'll right. see you in the next one for all members. And if you're not, then reach out to Ms. Penny for becoming members to get access to them. Mm -hmm. All right, goodbye. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you.